That big buck knows where he's going, but we don't. We assume he's going to continue the way he's walking. But chances are he's following a trail, a pattern that from the ground we don't see. Our cameraman and director John Ford has brought us many spectacular shots of deer over the past couple years. But Bill Martin, a Chevy dealer and hot air balloonist from Saginaw, said we ought to get a bird's eye view of the checkerboard patterns of deer habitat and watch the patterns of deer movement from the air. First filled with cold air, a few shots of heat from the burners sets the balloons upright where we load the baskets for takeoff. One of our pilots is Gordy Schaefer from Hubbardston, owner of the Michigan Balloon Company. His balloon is unmistakable. His balloons are busy in the summer, taking charter flights, mornings and evenings, but in the fall, Gordy loves to hunt deer. And before season, he takes many trips over his deer hunting territory, checking out the habitats and the deer. We're going to float over the Maple River. You'll see two time periods here, September from our recent flight and November, which we took last year. September with foliage and November after the leaf drop. One thing you notice when you peer down through the trees is that in the heavy woods, there isn't much undergrowth. When the leaves drop, deer really can't hide well in a big woods, and aside from the acorns, there's not much for them to eat. Now, we didn't see many deer in the heavy wooded areas. Most of the time, we flush them out of the grassy flats or brushy areas with a few trees or next to woods or fields. There they are. When spooked, they run for cover, which usually means trees. But frequently, they'll be lying down in grassy areas or even fields of beans or other low crops. Here's a recently vacated deer bed, quite a distance from the edge of the field. Deer like to bed out in the open, away from their runways, and this is where they bed in the summer and in the fall. But they're difficult to approach there. And when they spook, they don't necessarily follow a pattern. Now watch these deer come together and explode apart, all going different directions. They hear the burners igniting on the balloons, but they don't know where that sound is coming from. Deer runs are relatively reliable indicators of where to set a hunting blind. Look at this runway, heavily, heavily used. Most of the time, deer will walk down these trails, eventually making a rut like you see. But they also use runways as escape trails. But watch how this doe splits off the runway to get off to the side. Then she stops. She can't figure out where that balloon noise is coming from. She stops to scent the wind, cock her ears, and search with her eyes for any clue of where the intruder is. But she never looks up. And when spooked again, she'll angle back. Her ears are rotating as she runs, not sure of where the noise is coming from. She, she'll stop to look around again. Her pattern is broken, and she isn't sure which direction to go. Remember, when she wasn't quite as confused, she used the runway, which she'll use again when she settles down. Hunters are tuned to putting stands by deer runways, but you know, deer don't always travel on the open field side. A good bet is in the corner of a woods or a field facing towards the woods. This deer is comfortable with cover around it, but watch it bolt when it crosses the clearing. It wants to get to the other side. In the cover, it stops. They almost always do. And watch this fawn bolt when it hears the balloon. I haven't said anything yet about the wind. It's blowing towards the deer because that's the way the balloons are drifting. 
and the deer are always running away downwind in almost every case. Not one deer in both of our flights had crossed back and run against the wind to escape. They've all run downwind or crosswind, slightly downwind. Wind is not a big factor in determining which way a deer is going to move. They head for cover, or if they're disturbed, they change cover. But they don't automatically, as many people think, head against the wind. They like edges, fence rows, scattered trees, and they stay away from open fields where there's hunting pressure or activity, or hot air balloons floating overhead. Across the field out there. Wide open field. Oh, yeah, and we out there though. Now we've spooked a buck and watched the pattern it follows. The ditch, not in one field or the other, but along the cover. You can bet there's a heavily used runway along this ditch bank. And the buck runs quite a distance before all of a sudden it makes a turn and dodges into the corn. And look how well the corn hides the buck. But the buck can't see through that corn either. Same situation except November, cornfield has been cut. This agricultural event has a profound effect on deer patterns. No longer are cornfields used as cover, just as food. There are now openings that are a liability to deer. After watching deer move from a balloon, I've concluded that they move much like checkers in a checker game. Their favorite move is from corner to corner and they avoid crossing a field in the middle. They want to get to cover where they disappear from sight. The wind picks up two hours after sunrise and for safety's sake, we have to set the balloons down. What a way to check deer habitat, floating quietly over the treetops and fields. Back on the ground, we'll look for runs and corners linking the checkerboard fields so we can try to second guess the patterns deer follow in the fall. 